Hey, good afternoon. My name is Scott McCutcheon of Sovereign Studios. Welcome to episode 29 of my Yamaha Virago Cafe Racer project. Uh, this episode, we're going to be doing some more wiring. So if you're just tuning in with us, we just got the, uh, the main fuse put in in the last video. Uh, so we got that wired up from the uh, starter solenoid down to the fuse box. And now we'll run the, the main power wire up to the primary ignition switch where the key uh, inserts. So um, this should be a fun video. We'll finally get a, a chance to start seeing some of the things on our bike come to life. So um, let's get started. Okay, so the, uh, the factory wiring harness, um, as you can see, its main power wire, this is a 14 gauge uh, power wire. So I went and got some uh, 14 gauge wire, some new, some new 14 gauge wire that we're going to use. Um, we'll pull the uh, red wire out of here and then wire one end of it to the other end of the main fuse uh, that we installed in the last video. So uh, let me get my stuff organized here and we'll start with that. Okay, so here's our uh, 14 gauge uh, replacement wire. You can see that we have the same thickness now. Um, I think we're going to end up using 16 gauge wire for everything else. So I've got a bunch of 16 gauge wire here and here for different uh, colors and patterns in case we come across something. Um, so we'll end up using 16 gauge wire for most of the harness. Uh, but the power wire itself, um, we used uh, 12 gauge going down to the uh, starter terminal up to the main fuse and then from the main fuse to the ignition will be 14 gauge and anywhere we run a full 12 volts will be 14 gauge um, so hopefully we'll be good to go uh, for putting this in uh, we really just need to get one of these guys again um, and again like I said we're, we just like sort of work these off uh, by hand and they'll just come right off and we'll split it up put a little solder on there and be good to go so you want to make sure you crimp that down as best you can like really well before you solder it um, and then make sure you solder it in place And so the final step of this process, because this is the side that uh, is going to go directly in here, we can kind of, uh, I guess it's kind of a toss up as to whether or not you actually want to heat shrink the end of this joint. Um, I'm of the opinion that you should do so, just to kind of help protect it a little bit. Um, but you see this one we used a, a much thicker uh, heat shrink joint because uh, we wanted to get around this this nylon shroud um, but obviously you see it doesn't really fit in there so we kind of crammed it in place and yeah that's gonna be fine um, but it doesn't really do the best job of protecting the joint itself um, so we've used a, a much thinner uh, heat shrink joint here a much thinner one and this will this will form a much tighter seal. And hopefully that uh, that tighter seal now gives us a, a much better clearance. So we'll go ahead and just plug this in and make sure you put it in correctly. Uh, you know, with the the joint hitting the clip, and that looks really good. Perfect. Make sure it actually clips. You'll hear it snap in place 
once it's on that pin. And that's when you know you have a good seat for the fuse. Perfect. After which you can grab your 20 amp fuse and just pop that in place to make sure it fits. Very good. There's our 20 amp main fuse. So, okay. So at this point it's worth talking about how we're actually gonna make the main harness leave the fuse box. Um, so you'll see obviously we're gonna end up with you know, four wires per relay and two wires per fuse that are basically gonna be jammed out of this uh, hole right here. So it's gonna end up being this huge clump of wiring uh, that's basically gonna come up here and we're gonna have to hide or see that, you know, wrap it in something uh, so so that we can route it up this way just just close to the seat and underneath the tank but we're gonna have this huge cluster of wire exposed right here right there so we'll have to hide it somehow so to further that effort I'm hoping that we can use uh, more of this nylon seating um, and uh, you know, hopefully it'll look good. It does expand a little bit, see? So I think we can, we can fit a lot of wiring in there. Worst case scenario is that we had to split it up into two of these, um, to cover all of it. Uh, and if that happens, I'll have to come up with probably another, uh, uh, some other type of prote protective covering to cover all of the wiring cluster, you know, maybe like one of those, uh, you know, oh, here you go, like something like this, like some of one of these plastic tubes, I'll find a, I'll, I'll, I'll order a big fat one to cover the whole wiring harness coming out of the fuse box, but we'll do that when the fuse box is finished. Um, that being said, for now, We'll just allow the wire to come up and it's going to come up through the wiring harness and this one is going to get plugged right into this switch. So we're going to try and salvage most of this connector for the original ignition switch from the Yamaha R6 and we'll just plug it in right here. But as you can see we don't need that much length to do this wire. Um, that's probably going to be good, I think. Um, I'll give it a little bit of extra slack just to be on the safe side. Yeah, so right about there is where we will cut it. So, the trick with this primary wire is on the R6 harness for this ignition switch, there, there are four wires. Um, on the original on the original Yamaha Virago, there's only three. So on the original Virago, um, you know, here's your main power wire that goes to your your uh, ignition switch, uh, and then it, it leaves with this brown wire and a blue wire. Both of these are switched power. Uh, one is for the headlamp ignition system and turn signals. The other is for your tail tail lamp assembly. Um, as far as I know, those are both switched power circuits. Um, so your main power comes in here, you flip the switch, power goes out here. On the R6, I believe that's still true. So the red one is um, uh, your main power, the brown is your switch power that goes out to your headlights uh, and some other systems I think. These two blue ones are not the same, though. These two blue ones on the R6, uh, I'm pretty sure one of them gets connected to like the side stand switch circuit, um, and the other one goes directly to the ECU. I don't exactly know what they're for, but I have to assume that they're both also switched power. So what I think is gonna end up happening is we're going to basically chop these connectors off 
okay, and we're, we'll replace them with our own. Uh, but then these two blue wires are just going to get mated together for our application and come out as the one blue wire that we need for the original Viragos setup. So uh, we're going to do a little bit of circuit testing on this once we get the primary, wire, uh, primary power wire switched on. We'll do a little bit of circuit testing to make sure that that assumption is true and we'll go from there. So let's uh, chop these connectors off and see what we can do. Okay, so real simple. Just chop them off. Try and save as much of the wiring as we can. Connector we don't need. And connector we don't need. Obviously we don't have a uh, much space here and if we go too far we're going to end up having to uh, replace too much of the wiring and cut up this really nicely protected wiring harness you know factory protected harness so I'm going to try and see if we can chop off this uh, you know this black tubing uh, just prior to the green tape here and maybe we'll get lucky Okay, now that we got the uh, wiring exposed here, let's, uh, let's chop these blue ones to the same length so that they'll fit better on our new connector. And we'll go ahead and uh, strip them. All right, now with that stuff stripped and now readily accessible, I think what we can do is we can go ahead and test this. Let's uh, let's try it. All right, so there's our main power. Let's uh, let's go ahead and put the ground back in place. All right, and so with everything grounded, what we should be able to do here. So this is your positive, and this was the ground. Where's a good grounding point? All right, so if we turn the key and ground this out. Well, it's a poor ground, but you can see where it's starting to flicker. Okay, so that's us having turned the key and we have proper power coming out. And if we turn the key off and ground it, nothing. So that switch is good. I like to see that. All right, so we know that the switch is good. Um, now let's test those blue wires to see if we can uh, make sure that they also produce switched power. Okay, so it appears like these two blue wires don't produce switched power. Uh, which surprises me because now I don't really know what they're for. Um, maybe they provide switched grounds. Um, you know, I, I mean, I guess that's probably true. They probably do provide switched grounds uh, that go off, you know, because one of these, the, the blue and black one, I'm pretty sure according to the R6 wiring diagram goes directly to the ECU. So it probably is a ground. And then... Um, I don't recall exactly what the diagram said the blue and yellow one was, uh, but I think it goes off to like the kickstand switch circuit or something like that. So maybe also a ground. Um, either way, uh, it doesn't look like that particular switch is going to have what we require. Um, it's going to have what we require for this. So this to me looks like straight power um, that's coming out you know from both of these uh, uh, both of these wires so uh, I don't know exactly if that's true but it sure does look like it from the diagram um, so I mean this is a tail lamp fuse that goes out to the tail lamp and I mean that's the power wire um, you know, so uh, we're gonna roll with it. But before we uh, before we go much further and start building the connector, 
uh, we want to talk about the seething. Um, so again, the you know when we go to dis uh, when we go to put this in there, you know we discussed this earlier. We're gonna end up having a ton of wiring in the back of this thing that that boils into this one huge like harness that comes up through here. Um, so we're gonna try and use this stuff again. It's expandable, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to resize it to fit a few more wires. Um, but now is the time to put this stuff on there. And since now is the time to put this stuff on there, now is also the time to kind of think about how the rest of the harness is going to get put together so that we know exactly how much of this we need to use. Um, and I say that because you may have, you know, recalled from the last video, we talked about certain joints like this one here, and those are for circuits that we haven't done yet. And obviously if we seed up the wires where these uh, things are jointed to, we're going to have a problem getting at the wires when, we, when we're ready to do the joints. Um, so, you know, I, I don't, I'm not sure of a better way to do this, so we're going to go about doing it like this. And hopefully it will still be serviceable um, going forward. So, the trick here for this one is we're going to start with this uh, seat but we're basically going to have it push itself into the fuse box and come up and to right about here um, give it a little bit of extra slack and we'll have it come right about here to the base of the ignition module uh, and the reason for that is again we're going to have some joints that connect to some of the wires in the harness that will have to go out to other areas of the bike so we don't want the the seat to go too far but we want it to go far enough to protect most of the wiring up to a point so we'll cut that out and obviously it's worth taking a soldering iron to the end of these things because they will fray and become super crappy over time but if you cauterize the ends it's less likely to happen you're basically just melting the ends together. Make sure you get both sides. Now we can go ahead and slide this in place. And ideally you're going to do this before you've uh, clipped it. You know, it's, it's a lot more difficult to do when you have a exposed wire like this. And then just make sure that that slides down pretty far. And there we go. I think that looks good for what it is. So the next wires we need to talk about are the ones that come out of the harness and go further back. Um, in this case, it is the, this brown wire, which goes off to the, uh, uh, both the fuse box, you know, the ignition head switch, but also to the voltage rectifier. Um, so let's talk about what that might look, look like. Um, and we got some, because it's still a hot 12 volt wire, we got a, you know, 14 gauge brown wire here for this purpose. The trick with this wire is basically going to be that it comes out of the, you know, the, the switch and basically makes its way back down to the fuse box. Um, and from here we'll distribute off to the headlamp, the ignition, uh, ignition coils and the turn signals and that sort of stuff um, so this comes out and goes to the fuse box it also has a joint right here that sends it off uh, sends one of the power lines off to the voltage rectifier so we can see that if we follow the voltage line right Here's our Virago's ignition switch. And you'll notice that it actually has two brown wires coming out of it. One of which goes to the fuse box, which was this. And the other is a solid brown wire, 16 gauge wire feels like. Uh, solid brown wire that makes its way uh, down here and eventually comes up plugged into the voltage regulator. So 
on the original factory Virago wiring harness, that joint was actually up here in the uh, ignition's connector, the ignition switch's connector. Um, which is a pretty pretty smart idea on their part, really. Um, for my purpose, that means that I basically would have to wire two brown wires, which I guess I'm okay with, um, out of the harness through the seating and have it basically plug one into here or plug two into here and they both come out one plugs in here and the other keeps going to plug in there and I think that's going to end up being the most efficient way to do it is to basically mimic exactly what they did here um, so uh, we can go ahead and cut those wires and then we should be ready to plug it in, I think. I see kind of what they did. They used 14 gauge to the uh, fuse box and then 16 gauge to the voltage regulator. So in terms of the, uh, you know, like I said, we have one brown wire going from the connector on the ignition switch down through the harness and into the fuse box. It should more or less be the uh, exact same length as this red one that we already cut. We're just eyeballing it, that looks pretty good. Now I recognize that this actually splits off and powers all three of these switches. With that in mind, we're gonna leave this exposed for a moment and we're gonna build out a uh, much more intense fuse section here. Okay, so real quick, let's talk about the other fuses that are in the fuse box. So we already have the main fuse in there, which was this, a 20 amp uh, main fuse. We've got that in our fuse box. The other fuses are these four right here. And this was the original um, Virago fuse box. So here's the wiring for them, uh, where you can see that we have, you know, our tail lamp fuse where these blue wires come out. Here's the tail lamp fuse. And then here's the in, here's the out, right? And then we have this, um, this other brown wire that came in and connected to all three of these fuses. Um, and I guess you can kind of see that through, if we have this connector, here's the one brown wire coming in, okay? And it plugs in here in, into this base pin. And if we were to plug this back in, well, it leaves this brown wire as the one that has the power coming out, out of it. Right, so here is the harness exploded after we removed the seat. And you can plainly see where they made the joint connector. So they have the one wire that gets plugged in, you know, from here. There's this wire coming out from the ignition switch, which leads to this one, which leads to this joint. And, the, and that joint powers those three fuses. Um, so even though it looked like, you know, while the seething was in place, it looked like these wires came out and did something else. Um, they just have a real simple joint here. So we're going to mimic this joint in place for our new one. Okay, so this joint really isn't going to be easy to make. But what we're going to do is we're going to create kind of like a 90 degree bend in our wire so that when it does come down, you know, we can, we can basically plug it into the top of one of these fuses. Now note that, uh, recall that this line is basically powering three fuses. So we're going to have it power these three right here. And I figure the first line, you know, we can come down and, uh, pretty much plug it in right there, which means that the joint for the second two lines doesn't need to be very large, but it basically needs to uh, collect itself right here, almost at the bend. Um, you know, so uh, we'll give this a little bit of extra slack to make sure that we're accounting for when we slide the um, slide the wire all the way up into the box here um, that it'll more or less be like that and 
then what we'll do is we'll basically cut the uh, the wire casing right here solder in a joint for the next two fuses and then seal it all up gonna be kind of a pain to do um, but hopefully not too bad there's our open exposed joint and so it's gonna be a little difficult to judge exactly how much we need for this I'll say this is the first outside one and this will be the second outer one I suppose slightly longer okay so the trick is that we end up with two pieces of wire one slightly longer than the other the idea being that this one will connect to the outermost fuse and this one to the innermost fuse and we'll eventually create three uh, three wires total all right the idea being that we more or less end up with that and when we go to plug this in obviously it'll be kind of coming down like this and we'll cram all three into these uh, into these fuses I want to make sure that this one has a pretty good joint on it uh, and that you've done a good job soldering it just to make sure that it stays exactly how it's supposed to as we cram it in that tiny fuse box well, not super pretty but it'll do um, I mean I guess it's actually pretty good could be worse um, either way now that it's in place you want to make sure that you get it taped up uh, with some electrical tape I would have preferred to have used like heat shrink tubing and maybe we still can alright I still think it's gonna be worth getting a little tape on this because we use such a large piece of heat shrink tubing alternatively maybe get a smaller piece to help shrink it like this kind of a two-tiered shrink wrap job um, but I think that's good so now the trick is that we need to wire up these three pieces here to basically plug into three of these uh, fuse, fuse uh, connectors and then we can plug it into the box grab three of these it's worth noting that based on how we bent it we want to make sure that we get these uh, seated properly I'd like to use the top if possible um, and how we're gonna do this is I guess we're going to bring the wire down in here and maybe we'll end up using the uh, second third and fourth uh, connectors and when we plug them in we want to make sure that the eyelet is um, is facing down so the eyelet needs to be facing down so from our joint it basically means that each one of these needs to be facing the that direction like that not a big deal but worth noting before you go crimping these together once you got these things crimped they are ready for solder okay and with your uh, fuse connectors heavily soldered we can now just plug these in and again I'm going to use uh, two three and four to do this and try and get number two put in place first all right and uh, so when we go to push this in I'm gonna leave the the two next to the main fuse blank we'll use them one of them for the uh, the next fuse that we do the taillight fuse but these three we're going to use four five and six so uh, we'll push slot four in there here's slot five uh, and then slot six finally and you just want to make sure that they all pop into place there we go and there's our top three fuses next step here is going to just be to uh, slide this this wire up through the same seat that we had the 
uh, main power wire go through. As you can see, we'll be able to sort of sneak that down to cover both wires. And now we got this piece coming out up top. Okay, so that looks good. I'm happy with how that turned out. Next step is going to be uh, the second blue wire that comes out of here. Now I'm pretty sure this is just a hot power wire and part of me wants to hook it up directly to the brown wire, the same wire that's coming out uh, and powering this other fuse. I kind of feel like maybe we could have just connected it the same way we had and all four of those would have saved me some wire. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure we could have just uh, mated these four fuses instead of how the original Virago appears to have separated these circuits. Uh, you know, I, I don't know why they chose to do that um, other than maybe different loads are placed on the, the tail lamp system versus the headlamp system. I'm not really sure, but whatever. They originally separated them, so we're going to mimic their design uh, and just run a different wire for this. Um, so that's a, uh, a solid blue wire that you can see coming out of the ignition and it would go out to the fuse box and then the fuse box would then return it um, and all it does is snakes through the harness down out to the, the rear brake lights um, so it is the main power wire for that rear brake light so when you turn the ignition switch on the rear brake lamp lights up. Uh, obviously you can see the other power switches like that would go to the, the rear brake switch and, and or the front brake switch. Um, you know, that would actually light it up, you know, even more when you're pressing the brakes as opposed to just the running light of the tail light itself. So that's what this power wire is. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll cut a length of blue wire for that purpose. And of course this blue wire is, uh, you know, headed back up to the ignition harness, more or less. So it's going to end up being the same length as the previous ones that we already cut. And again, this one's pretty straightforward and more or less goes straight from the main switch to the fuse box. So, um, go ahead and chop it off. We'll feed it into one of these things here. And just like the others, we'll solder in place. Once you've got it soldered up, we can just uh, plug it in and we'll use um, this one here after which we can do the same thing and just slide it up in place much like that and so there's our the tops of our four main fuses and this is the main switch wiring harness so the final trick is uh, building a connector to mate these two and so obviously the red goes to the red, the brown goes to the brown. We just need to figure out what we want to do with the blue. And I think for now we're going to put the, we're just going to jam them into the same end of the connector so that they mount like this. Uh, and we'll get rid of these or ignore these two for now uh, since they don't appear to produce any power. Um, so we'll roll with it like that. Now before we go building the connector, it's worth mentioning that uh, if you recall early in the video we talked about how the OEM Virago harness had actually split the main power coming out of the ignition and uh, sent one of the wires uh, off to the fuse box, but the other it sent off to the voltage regulator. Uh, so we need to accommodate for this connection from the ignition to the voltage regulator. Uh, we need to accommodate for that as we're building this new connector. Um, so to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut uh, another piece of brown wire um, that's basically going to go from the connector when we plug it in here to this connector here. So it doesn't need to be very long, um, but that's about what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to build this piece. Um, so no big deal. Let's uh, go ahead and we'll cut this pretty much right here. And this will be the wire for that. 
connection, which kind of means that now we're going to have three connections that come out of this one socket. It's basically going to be this to the red, these two to the brown, and then this third one also to the brown. So these three connections are basically going to all connect to the same uh, endpoint. Which may be a little difficult to accomplish depending on the size of our connectors. I'd say that once you've soldered the joints, it's worth putting a little heat shrink tubing over them. Um, you know, like that, so that you'll pr not only protect that soldered joint, but also prevent any random shorts that may occur by leaving it exposed. Mm, this one's not going to work out so well because because of that double joint. These particular connectors aren't meant to take two, two wires. Um, let's see if we can maybe clean this up. Okay, and with two out of three done, finally we'll do the blue wire, which will just go right here in the middle. And we'll go ahead and get a little solder on this guy, and then get a little piece of uh, heat shrink tubing on there cram it into the connector and pull it through so it seats properly and now we have our ignition switch connector to the fuse box and again uh, you know we're gonna have this mounted up here and this will just route you know up under the seat up to the frame and we'll plug it into this this thing right here okay so now that we have this side of the connection, let's make the ignition side uh, or the switch side of the connection. In order to make the other side of this uh, switch here, we need a uh, another three pin connector but the uh, opposite male side. So this is like the female side that we just created and this is the male side. Um, it obviously once connected will uh, you know fix up all uh, or obviously once connected will you know mate these wires together um, so the trick here is we need to basically ignore these two blue wires we'll tape these off and uh, we'll connect this these these other two wires to this three pin connector um, obviously you'll you'll notice there are grooves here on the inside of the connector that make sure you can only mount this uh, or plug this in a certain way. Uh, so you'll want to take note of where the wires are. In this case, uh, the red one on the outside of the groove, blue one in the middle, and the brown one's closest to the groove. Um, you know, so when we go to hook this up again, it'll be red on the outside, brown on the out, uh, brown on the inside and then the blue in the middle. Now concerning the blue in the middle, because, uh, because we identified that these two wires aren't uh, powered like they are in the Virago, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ignore these and then we're basically, you know, we, uh, we're basically gonna take this spare wire here, this blue wire, tiny blue one that I just cut, um, We'll take this, this blue wire and turn it into like a hoop that kind of does this. Uh, it'll connect itself to the switched brown power wire and loop itself back through the connector so that it'll power the blue wire out here. And the reason we designed it this way is so that the wiring that's in the harness itself that goes out to the fuse box um, is now dedicated a, a single wire is dedicated to the connector just like it was in the OEM harness uh, and we do this so that if we ever come back in the future and decide that we need to use these two blue wires we don't have to redo the wiring in the harness and we only have to redo the wiring from the switch so hopefully that'll make it a little bit easier to uh, perform any maintenance we have to do in the future. Um, but that being said, I've already uh, I've already gone and uh, you know put a uh, an endpoint on this wire, put a little uh, 
you know, small bit of heat shrink tubing there around it, and we'll slide it into the center uh, of this of this thing. And you'll notice how these get put together. Um, uh, if I recall, there is a tiny little T switch in there, uh, and you'll see the the bracket right here. So as this slides in, I want to say it goes this way, yeah, like that, right? And so now it's locked in place, and we're good to go there. Cool. So, like I said, this is just going to wrap around, and we'll basically do this this number with it. Let's go ahead and get the uh, crimps in place. Okay, so we got a pretty good solder joint there, and uh, we peeled back the covering on this a little bit. We're going to go ahead and seal up these uh, blue wires so that they're more or less out of our way. Here we go. And those should be pretty well protected. Just a little bit of electrical tape on the end. Yeah, so we grab a small piece of heat shrink tubing here. And make sure you're going to get it in the right connector. Uh, before you slide it in place. I'm going to do the same thing with this one where you had a, uh, a joint. And last but not least, just slide it into place in the connector. Same way you did the others. Now you've got a pretty decent connector for your switch. So again we have this uh, little frame hook here. We're not going to tighten this down just yet because we may end up uh, putting some more wiring in there. Uh, but for this guy, you know, we should just be able to uh, go ahead and plug this in. And then, of course, we'll just slide this connector in place, like so. And so, with a pretty uh, nice and sturdy connector there, we should be good. You know, we'll end up uh, doing some type of wire tucking here. You know, since we have a little bit of extra slack, looks like that's okay. Um, yeah, that should be it for the uh, ignition switch. Let's um, let's put the ground back on and test it out. Okay, uh, we'll take our little test light. We put the uh, we put the ground back on and. We should be able to um, you know, simply uh, wrap this around here. Then if we uh, turn our key, there's our light, so we know that's good. And that'll be the wire that goes off to our uh, um, and this, this is the wire that goes off to our uh, voltage regulator, right? And in order to test, in order to test the other ones on the other side of the fuse box, I'm pretty sure they're going to be good, but we'll uh, test them anyway. And all four of those should just have power, switched power. So. Uh, I guess it's going to be worth probably testing all of them. There's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. Alright, so they're all working. We can uh, run back through that test with the key off. Just to be certain. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I think that about does it for the uh, switch. Cool. So that about does it for the uh, uh, for the ignition switch on this bike. Uh, now that we're all wired up, we can turn the key and actually get power to the rest of our fuse block and stuff like that. So um, I think that's a pretty good place to call it right about here. Uh, there's Something pretty cool that uh, I think we're going to do for the next video is uh, we're going to replace the tail light. Uh, I want to go ahead and get that fixed before we get too far into the wiring. 
Uh, so we're going to end up replacing the tail light with uh, a fancy one from Yamaha R6. So stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll continue with wiring here shortly. See you then.